through these hard times, the negativity, the jealousy. certain things in life that you can stop, and there's certain things in life that can't be stopped. Let's go. Yo, 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 people, welcome to The Delinquent Show. What's happening, JP? How you been doing, lad? All good, all good. And look who's back. Oh, we have missed this brother. Peaky Blinders himself, Blakey, with AKA Colin, who looks like he's going to be a right nuisance today. He is. He's just woke up, bright as a button. I, I, I'm, I'm not happy. Why? Well, I've decided I'm not calling you Peaky Blinders anymore. I'm editing that shit out. Oh. From, now, from now on, you're known as the foreskin. Why is that? You disappear when it gets hard. <laughs> <laughs> the foreskin. Love life, it, love has it. Been, life has been challenging for the last couple of weeks, but there hey, you go. Ho. Hey, ho. Hey, we got a fun, packed show for you. First of all, thanks to our sponsors, Da Vinci Mobility. Another uh, great sponsor we have. Beautiful. Thank you, boys. Uh, the other thing is, sorry for not being able to film last week, bit of technical problems, but hopefully we have solved it and you're still with us. Our subscribers are keep moving up, we keep moving up, we're getting close, we're getting close. And look who's got a new toy, stupid boy. Leave the microphone there. No, unnecessary to have one. Mine's is out of the way as well. So hopefully the laptop. Yeah, Blakey. We're not going to go technical with you, lad. Okay. No, don't do that. Christ. Just stay with what you've got. Hopefully, the sound is 100% better. Johnny, let's start the show. Let's start the show now. What have you got for me, brother? Packed show today. Obviously, two week recap. Lots happened in the two weeks. We've had uh, the Easter tournament. We've had. The GB men's tournament, which has just finished. We've had the NCAA championships. Them Huskies. The prediction. The Oracle. He gets it right. Oh, the Oracle. I can you um, call yourself the Oracle. The, sit, but listen, Lad, you just chose me, last week, last year's champions, for goodness sake. It's not Oracle. Not, not many teams have won it back to back. Come on. UCLA. Cincinnati. Duke, and, and, and North I, Carolina. Yeah, and I think that's it. And I think you're sexist as well, because oh, because you never even mentioned the girls. You never even mentioned the girls' tournaments, which was miles that, that, better than the men's tournaments. That's yeah. in part two. Uh, that's in part two. Yes, yeah, South you're Carolina. Only South you're only Carolina. Mentioning, you're only mentioning yeah. the women's game because your North Carolina went out in the. Sweet 16s. <laughs> South Carolina. Let's go for it. What a game that was, the final. Anyway, <laughs> we'll get back to that in part two. Let's let's crack on to our first one. So, first thing we've got to do is recap on <clears throat> the uh, declaration of silence. I heard no, you got I another know. I heard you got another letter. Email, sorry. I had um uh, I'd gone back and forth between me and Queen J many times. <coughs> I just wanted clarification. What comments have I supposedly said that are derogatory? All I kept getting back was uh, things I said in episode 10, 11 and 12. Probably wouldn't really that. Stand up, wouldn't really stand up in a court. Really, know, but... Probably because you said a lot in 10, 11 and 12, probably 13 and 14. Maybe a transcript of what you said might help. Because we know yeah, you're watching. Maybe. We know you're watching. So you should, you well, know, it, pull it, pull it, out it, this transcript, write it down, let us know. It's nice to hear that they've watched episodes 10, 11, and 12, whatever. But unless you tell me what I've said, what's derogatory, I'm not going to sit back and watch. I haven't got time. We're making episodes, we're doing work, we're saving footage. So um, I left it there. The only thing I, did, I could say was she kept coming back saying, 
Queen J, this is. Anything you want reading out in the uh, boardroom thing, send it to Jules, the chair of the board. Well, the letter should have come from Jules, the chair of the board, but it came from you. And in the end, I had to ask, how am I meant to reply to Jules from the board if I haven't got an email address? And that point, Queen J sent an, an email apologising and attached her email address in. At that point, I was done because my reply was on this. You're not shut me up. What are you going to achieve? What? Let's ask Blakey because we spoke in the week about it. Blakey, what do you reckon, Blakey? Blakey, what do you reckon, What's, lad? Because you wasn't here when the when it went down, obviously, because you was you know in, busy doing stuff. But now is your right to reply. We've said what we want to say. We've said our right to reply. What's your right to reply? What are they going to achieve by banning me? Well. If that's what, just suspending your membership? Oh, I you don't know? know. It should be. I'm sure your first crime is a suspended sentence, isn't it? <laughs> well, it just seems odd, doesn't it? I mean, do you get your money back if you've uh, joined for know. a year? I don't know. I'd but like to, I, I could put it towards footage. That's if that's all they've got. Well, we're going to take your membership away. Then they've got nothing, have they? I mean, what else can they do to you? But they can't. We're only asking questions that their members are asking, um, and aren't getting any replies. If you look at some of their Facebook um, posts, people have commented on there, and there's been no response to their comments. There's one it fellow. Is. Was it Ian Trot? Yeah. He's been asking questions, challenging for years, and has not had a response from them. So that just says it all. As soon as someone goes slightly off their, uh, you know... Not well, they're, they're saying, I'm doing negative derogatory comments, and I sh I'm not promoting the sport right. But well, uh, hold on a minute. Maybe, so. that, maybe, maybe that's why they've not posted that GB lost to France in the opening game at the weekend, because it's a negative result. But maybe on. that's why they didn't post it. So we're only to talk about them positive and not negative. But we don't really have anything positive to say. We do have positive when the teams are playing, the girls and the boys are playing. But what do we have positive about the association? There's nothing positive about you. You're a crock of rubbish. Well, you have, you, you've not had a particularly positive experience when you went to that meeting. Did exactly. You? exactly. So... And they said your reputation precedes you. Well, their reputation precedes them, as far as you're concerned now, based on what happened at that meeting. Yep. <laughs> so, you know, you've got a right to come out with facts, as long as they're facts. And if they don't like it, well, change it. Well, they're not going to like it, are they? Let's, let's just put it out there. We've well, identified that they're spending over two hundred thousand pounds on a, a league of four women, four women's teams. When there's already a national league, yeah, yeah, I've I've spoke about it. I've mentioned it again. Send the internet, please. I'm at my address. We've mentioned the daylight robbery and the poor quality of the coaching awards, level one and level two. I saw someone, the other day. Someone commented on one of their posts. Yeah, Gary Davidson commented. It said that seems a bit expensive. For a no, level one, two hundred yeah, pound. No reply. Yeah, no, no now, They don't reply. Defend it. If you think that 200 quid is justifiable, come out and defend it. What the problem is? <laughs> you've got them and you've got the members. <clears throat> that doesn't happen. But the problem is, Blakey, <clears throat> you pay 200 quid, then you pay another 200 quid to get to level two, but you're not even... No, that's 400 or that's 400, 400 all right, let's say 400 quid. So that's 600 quid. But all that does is get you to coach in the league. You don't have any chance of coaching any of the, the national teams because they're not interested in personal coaches. From Unless Great you're able-bodied and you don't understand the sport, then yeah. you get a chance. Yeah, then you might get a chance. They're not interested in that. So what's the point in doing them? It's mm. pointless. But you've, got pay, you've got to pay for other stuff as well and you to coach in the league because to be a member or whatever or... Oh yeah, coaching. Don't yeah. You have to. There's, there's stuff on top as well, so it's not cheap. You're looking at five hundred quid, aren't you? Yeah. To get so, to level two. So there is. Yeah, you so, got your safeguarding. You've got your DBS check. All that. 
So like, it only which, which should have took me two or three weeks. It actually took three months for them to get it all through. So I coach you know, you. because I coach the you people the, in the, the office answers. don't answer the phone. They don't answer emails. Yeah, I coach West Brom uh, Foundation and Big Sky Basketball, and it cost me. You have to pay a membership at the start of the year. Obviously, that's it. Yeah. But the club paid that for me. The club paid that for me, and that's it. Here, yeah. it's like you, you're paying for this, 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 this. Like, but where are you going to? There's no gold at the end of the rainbow. If I want to become a coach and I move my way up the ranking, will I have a chance to coach at the next level? Mm. No. No. Because they're not interested. Could, like, can, I, you, can I, you actually attend the meeting, Johnny? We can all hold on, Blakey. You're not heard the address. We can all attend the meeting. We just can't vote. No, he's on about the meeting about my tribunal. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Well, yeah, I assume so. But what's the point in that? They've already had their answer. It's pointless. They've waste. They're going to waste twenty minutes of their meeting talking about John. They've wasted what two months of their whatever they do in that office. Oh, I just think it'd be quite funny face to face. See if they do it face to face, they could put, you know, we'll, be, we'll get the face to face when we're at the AGM meeting. Well, yeah, we can attend, can't we? Yeah, we can't because, vote. Don't forget, we are pushing for a vote of no confidence. But hold on, Blakey's not heard that yet. So, Blakey, what do you think? A vote of no confidence should definitely be be put up at the AGM for the board and. The, yep. the CEO and the other Lord Lucan, who we never well, see. Put it, out to, put it out to the membership. We've told because him. Because obviously there are there are members we know that are getting in touch that aren't happy. Well, yeah, put it out there. Take, well, someone, someone, someone messaged, someone's messaged in asking, how do we go about this? What we've mentioned, the vote with no confidence. So how to do a vote with no confidence in a committee? A motion of no confidence can be called against any club society committee member either through one, a petition signed by at least 15% of the membership of the club society or 10, whichever is greater, or a two-thirds majority vote at a club society committee meeting. That's how you do it. Hmm. You wanted to know, that's how you do it, folks. Well, you Get put your it hand in, up. You put it in any other business at the end. Yeah, any other business at the end. And we would like to vote a no confidence in the committee and yeah. the CEO. That's what how you do it. Everybody puts their hands up. Adios amigo. Bye bye. Simple as that. And that's what should, you know, hashtag no confidence in our association. That's the new hashtag. No confidence at all. Because you don't answer the members' questions. You're too, you're too busy trying to ban a member who only done it to see what your system was and we proved that your system is totally rubbish because nobody knows what the hell they're doing in that system. Well, it's not just my test, is it? Let's look at the tests. I tested how to become a member, do the DBS and the Fail. safeguarding. Fail. It took three weeks. It took. It ended up being three months. We tested the system with Cine applying to be a coach of the under-25s. You failed. Wait a minute. There was a system on the error. There was an error on the system. I mean, the, the phone lines were not right. The, the pigeon never landed on the roof correctly. Error. Your errors are just mounting up. But you're a world-leading national governing body. Behave yourselves. I tell you. Should be in McDonald's building Happy Meal boxes. That's what you lot should be. No, they'll mess that up, lad. <laughs> it takes some doing building a Happy Meal, you know. They'll mess that up, man. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That's where we're at with the recap on them. I've given up on it. Yeah. They're not going to achieve anything. I've got bored of it all. <clears throat> it's too exciting what's going on at the moment with us, the new investors, the uh, the other sponsors that are stepping up. So uh, The game footage that has just come out like that, 84 footage is unreal. Thank you, whoa. Later on, that's man. in the second part. Come on, lad! Don't, don't, don't spoil it, lad. For them, have you not the got first. a copy of the script? You don't send me one because you prefer me to be off script, you buggers. Oh, I thought Joe had sent it. No, he he don't speak to me. Joe's a well, he doesn't speak to anyone. I've never heard his voice. Never no, heard his voice. No, but the thing is, it's too. It's, everything he does is all technical stuff, and it, so he ain't going to get in touch with me, is he? Mm, true. 
But, so this week's episode, titled, Time for the Classification Revamp. Yeah. We've mentioned it regarding the women and the point deduction, how it's manipulating the Champions (laughs) Cup. It has done for years. Um, The other day I saw on Facebook one of our good friends, Reg McLennan in Canada, he put a post up. Now, this was regarding Dave Eng and his situation. But to cut it down, basically his post comes out at the end with, it is long overdue to promote a sport, not a disability. The classification system should be five classes with 15 points total on court and all athletes should range between one and four points. Now, so for me, I kind of get it. I kind of get what Reg is getting at. Because if we're ruling out these people that have got an illness, not a disability, we can put them in as a five and up the game to 14.5. Yeah, so that's what I think. 15, I think, is too much. Because it's not going to make a difference. Because we're 14, so we're going to put a five in. So that adds another point. So it's not going to make a difference. Okay, 14 and a half, and I don't really understand why internationally we're still playing at 14, but club basketball, Euro Cup, which is the biggest competition in the world for club teams, we're playing at 14.5. And also, everybody's playing in that, that Euro Cup. Like, I feel sorry for the likes of David Eng and, and George Bates and those. You know, they played, like David Eng, how many uh, Paralympics did he play in? Blimey, he was around in my time. He was a young lad, weren't he? Yeah, well, 2008 was his first. So, I think he was in Athens. Yeah, so maybe right. So even that, he's played in all no. those Paralympics and then you're going to strip him away to say that he's not classifiable. It does not make sense. What we yeah. need to do, the classification has been the same for 30 years. Mm. It's huge. Yeah. 30 years. Get that. Thir- three decades. Yeah. It needs to change. The, why does it need to change? Because disabilities are different now. You know, we're putting people in classes that it doesn't make any sense. So we've got people in class two who can tilt all of those things against real class twos who can't do any of those things. Yeah. Well, I'll, think about I'll, it. 30 years ago, people weren't strapped in the chair. Yeah. I, I, and people, also, weren't, people weren't playing with a 20-degree camber. And I also don't think strapping should have any influence on the classification. Because you're trying to make yourself one with the chair and make yourself better. <clears throat> well, it's got to be medical. Yeah. If, if, Abdi, if Abdi Jammer is strapped in, with every strap available, he's still a one. Of course. Yeah. But if, if he's so strapped in with every strap available, you're probably more hindering him than helping him, if you know what I mean, because he's 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 still a one, but he's not that uh, classic one who have straps around their torso. Yeah. They, they, they used to penalise you for straps, and it changed, because I was a two. And then once I started wearing a, a lap strap, and a hip strap, they made me a two two point yeah, five. But, yeah, but what I'm saying, Blakey, that shouldn't that shouldn't have been why they've made you two point oh. five. But then they changed. Then they changed it, didn't they? And said, well, anyone can wear straps. Yeah. So then you. <laughs> sh- so then, if you look at it in that way, then Blakey, then you should have gone back to being a two. Because the argument was well, or, or that the lower classes had was well, four fours or four and halves can wear as many straps as they want. Yeah. And that, that helps them. Yeah. But this well, is think of it this way. In 1995, a GB camp at Stoke Mandeville, <coughs> Australia were over. And at the start of the game, Troy Sachs lined up against Simon for the tip. And Troy tilted to win the tip. G- GB stopped playing. They were all crying. It's a technical. It's a technical. But it wasn't because one wheel was on. The, that was when tilting came into the sport. Mm. Now, he could do it because he was also strapped in. Troy. Yeah. So I Simon wasn't. wasn't. Yeah, but then, so then the game has evolved. 
So what's happened over the 30 years, the game itself has evolved with the technology, with new chairs, yeah. better strapping, all of those things, but the classification has not evolved. Yeah. So Well, look at it now. You can sit inverted. Yeah, yeah. You got threes. That takes some core muscles to sit inverted. Yeah, you've got some threes and three and a half so that are sitting inverted. So it does take some core muscles, but like and twos are sitting inverted. Yeah, it's true. But and I don't want them. If they said right, we're going to change the classification, but we're going to change it for everybody who's new coming in the sport. That doesn't make any sense either. No, you got to change it means... from the start. Everybody, yeah, every a... single body who's playing wheelchair basketball, everyone needs reclassifying. If it if they're not. You're just leaving a loophole to be yeah. to, for someone to beat the it's, system. It's got to be like we always say. It's got to be function. Trunk is so so vital um, in our sport. If you you know just to tilt, you've got to have good good stability, good core. I mean, yeah. I could get up, but I couldn't stay up. No, it's, that's that's what I'm saying. Someone like Stevie Kane, a natural two pointer, doesn't matter if he's bolted to the chair. If he tilts, he's not holding it up. It'll yeah. just be a momentum oh, keeping yeah. him up. And he'll then have, he's coming straight back down. He'll either come straight back down or he'll fall straight out. Or he'll fall out, yeah. Yeah, you go too far one way, yeah. You go too far. When you've got core muscles, you can actually control how far you go so you can stop it going. When you've got mm. none, you either go up and straight back down or you go up and over. Now, I'm seeing two-pointers, 2.5s, doing things that that's not natural. I had to use one hand to tilt as well. I'd have to st stabilise myself on the wheel, this side, and then tilt up. Yeah, but you had you had a fag in the other hand. Go up two-handed for a rebound. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen I've seen I've seen twos and two and a do that. Yeah, but they don't have fags in the other hands, Blakey. <laughs> no, no, serious, serious. It needs revamping. Come on, you cannot not agree with me. It needs revamping. Look at the game. There's too many. There's too many loopholes in it right now. At what's hurting the game, it, and the loopholes are actually driving paraplegics out the sport. And like I said, and I think I think if we are if we we Colin. introduce the five point player into our sport internationally, huh. it's going to aid the low pointers being fielded again. But we're not talking about a, a Bs, are we? We're talking no, no, about no, no, of no, 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 no. Think that we're, we're we're like George about, Bates. We're talking about the players that have been declassified. Dirk to, Passawan, to play in the Para, To play in the Paralympics. Yeah. Now, well, Passawan, Passawan had crimes, didn't he? But, and we've said about him walking up and down and all that sort of thing. But that effect, if he had a flare-up, that affected him in the tournament. He always fatigued, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, but, but well, that's, the five-point player will be for all of those. And like, I definitely don't agree with the IPC's motion because they're strict with some sports and not strict with others. So basketball, we've had to get rid of them. Yet tennis, they've still got people who've got those sort of diseases. And they're playing and they're really winning big prize money. How does that... How, and they're going to play in the Paralympics. It makes no sense. Have they done a deal with tennis? Well, there's no classification in tennis, is there? That's the thing. It's open. There is, Blakey, but you've still got to be disabled. Yeah. Oh, to play at the Paralympics, you should be, yeah. So the people that have got illnesses that are playing there haven't been looked at, have they? Well, I think you find they probably have, and they found a way around it. They've either done some backhanded deal or whatever, but for some reason the IPC have got a thing with basketball. Or they're high profile. Yeah. Well, it shouldn't matter if they're high profile or not. You know, you think about basketball. This... David Ng, how high profile was David Ng? Think of yeah. it this way, right? <clears throat> Wheelchair basketball didn't nearly feature in Paris because of this war between the IWF and the IPC over the classification for fiasco. Hold on a sec. He's got something he shouldn't have. Sorry. What would happen if the IWBF stood their ground and didn't back down to the IPC and they never went to Paris this year, the wheelchair basketball? Would that, would that have bettered? Should they have stood the ground? IWBF they instead probably, of backing down. Maybe they should have stood the ground, but they were scared of not being in the Paralympics. But sometimes you've got to make a stand to make it better. Mm. Do you, th you think? Well, think, it, think. Hold on, John. I'm only reading. I'm only reading what someone sent in. Yeah, but think hold of on. the publicity alone that would have created how massive that publicity would have been that wheelchair basketball wasn't featuring 
because of the war between IWF and IPC. Yeah. And do you think the Paralympics would have been greater without basketball or lesser without wheelchair basketball? Lesser. It's the number one Paralympic sport. Yes. But there's no argument there's no argument about that. But it seems it's that those people the new or the uh what well, I can't remember what they call him now. Or the CEO, whatever he's called, at the top doesn't seem that way. He thinks uh, the president. The president, sorry, the president doesn't look like he sees it that way. He thinks they could do without basketball. I think if they'd have got rid of it, it'd have been IWBF would have had a lot of trouble getting back in because they put different sports in all the time. They'd have just promoted another sport, which would have been ridiculous. But, basketball was one of the founding sports. But the thing is, Blakey, they could have put other sports in, but it's a shallow games without basketball. Yeah. What do people come to? The, they don't come to the Paralympics. The only time you've ever seen full stadiums at the Paralympics for all the events is London. Did you see it in Rio? No. Yep. Only basketball. Obviously, we know Tokyo couldn't have none. Paris is this Paris coming through. So, <clears throat> what the IWBF have, and we support you, the IWF. You've had to, you've had to, kind of bow down and to them. Bunker down, yeah. Bunker down. Make it a smaller tournament. Just because he spat his dummy out. Now, yeah. if 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 the what happens when if the IPC change is a new president in town? Yeah. Because obviously they have votes all the time. Is he is he going to have that same thought about basketball? Or is he going to change it? Because what I look at the Olympics, the Olympics, I think it's thirty two teams for the men's and women's basketball. But they've also added three-on-three -three basketball. So what's going on? Yeah. Well, regarding the classification, women's deduction is 1.5, isn't it? It's not one. Yeah, but I think that should be down to either half or one. That's in a mixed team, isn't it? That's yeah, in a mixed, mixed team. Yeah. But what about if the deduction was only eligible for people that wasn't an international player? If you, were, if you weren't playing for your country... The codes uh, helps the sport grow. Maybe, maybe. Like I said, and I don't, Blake, you wasn't here. I think there should be a Women's Champions League. I think there's enough teams in Europe. And maybe you incorporate an outside, a world team to make a Women's Champions League. Because I think they deserve a Women's Champions League. The game is growing. You know, we don't want to see girls being like cannon fodder in these teams. Well, you mentioned it at the start of the show about the NCAA women's. Did you see who played before the women's final? The oh, wheelchair. my goodness. Steph, Stephanie Wheeler's team. It was the USA versus, I think, like a mix of, of them. And they played at the NCAA. And you know what? The worst the thing is with the NCAA, the women's tournament, the women's tournament outstripped the men's tournament for the f first time in since it started. They had bigger crowds, bigger TV audience. And then I'm sitting there watching, and there you see you at Team USA, the wheelchair, were playing. Unbelievable. 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 And yet, do we get anything, that sort of publicity here in England? No. Definitely not. The NCAA Women's Tournament Final Four. Massive TV coverage. Massive for them. Just falling behind. So, like, yeah, with the, with the women's points, it should, I reckon it's either half. One and a half is probably too much now. What happens with juniors when they play... At uh, Euro Cup. Euro Cup. Yeah, if they they're... They have points. No, if they're under 22, they get uh, a point off, which yeah. doesn't make any sense either. You think well, about... No. You think about the Imagine last... If Patrick Anderson in his... <laughs> when he was 20, playing at a Euro Cup and getting a point off, that's ridiculous. Yeah, he was mustard when he was 20, weren't he? Yeah, but if you look at it, Mikey, like me and Johnny have been talking about, is probably the last 15 to 20 years of Euro Cups have been won by teams who've had points deductions in their team some way or another. For the woman. For a woman, For woman or player. a junior. Galatasaray did it. Landil did it. All the big clubs. They, they're just abusing the loophole. 
And I, yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't mind if they were doing it to better the girls' game, but you hear them coaches, and we've been on the inside. All they say to the girls that are playing, just get out of the way. Yeah. Just make just be make yourself a nuisance. Get out of the way. Yeah. Well, think of it this way. How many one-pointed women are currently playing in, in foreign teams compared to high-point players? It's only Landil that I got... Um, Holloman. The shooter from America. Holloman. Yeah. All yeah. the others are all low pointers. Can two do it? Has San Stefano got one? Well, all I, all I know off the top of my head, can two have got one with Sophie Cargill, is it? Yeah. Um, no, I mean a higher point player. No, no. Rosa, I think Rosa no. Holloman is the only one. Oh, right. Okay. If you look but at... With the low pointers... Uh, there's loads of them. Bill Bauer abusing it. Albathetti mm. abusing it. Um, there was another one. Fundosa do it at some point. Uh, Turingham do it as well. They all mm. do it. Now, mm. this is my point is, if that was only half a point, would they be able to still do it? No. No. Because... No. But, because... Put the rule in. Put the rule in that them players are international super, international players for their own country and they're not allowed the deduction, would them teams still be signing them low-pointers? No, they go and find a power. No, they yeah, they go and find an Abdi or something. They go and find a power. Mm. But, I think, it, just give them half a point. All right, we, you can't go from one and a half to, or whatever it is, to nothing. Give them half a point. And let's see where it goes. But first of all, we got to change the whole structure of the classification system. You can't have a 30-year-old classification system and you've not yeah. looked at it. They've not even looked at it. It's not even been looked at. Not even no. thought at. Be bold. And may, may, maybe this is another thing with the IWBF. Maybe they're not seeing that this loophole's hurting uh, the game. Yeah. You know, I, I back the IWBF. I wish they had stood up against <laughs> the IPC. I think the IPC are disgusting. How they're treating wheelchair basketball over the classification thing. But at the same time, IWBF have to take a piece of the pie and say, well, hang on, our classification does need a revamp. It needs looking at the loopholes are being abused. And, uh, it's it's time. Well, it's not time. It's overdue. Yeah, and, it, and that's the thing, John. It may, they may take a look at it and say, there's nothing wrong. And then you say, right, at least you've looked at it. But mm. there's, there's been no mention in 30 years mm. of looking at it. Don't forget, we went from one classification, ripped that up and said that's not good enough because of new pl new players like amputees and all different sort of players coming in, disabilities coming in, to this one that we've got. So clearly, we should be doing it again. again yeah. To keep there up is the another high, high point woman playing. Ellen Freeman plays for Burgos, doesn't she? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Mateo, yeah, Cap yeah. Mateo Ferryan's team. Yeah, so... It should be, you know what, we're gonna this is what we're gonna do. Starting from you know, twenty four, twenty five season, anybody who goes to a European competition, international competition, will be reclassified. Yeah. As soon as you once you've gone to those tournaments, because they do, do the classification there, once you've gone to those tournaments, you're gonna be reclassified. If you go to a Paralympics, if there's a tournament before you'd be reclassified. Because I do like... I think the Repichards bring something to it. But I just don't believe we have enough teams in there. It should be we've had eight teams already qualified and you, we're waiting for four more spots to make 12. Yeah, yeah. Because I agree with that. Because you cannot... And I promise you, you cannot have a situation where the host nations in the Paralympics may not be at the, the competition. It just can't happen. Because the, the people, like in Paris, come in this Paris. Paris could go, have wheelchair basketball, with no French team. Men or women. It's a very big possibility. Whereas yeah. what you could have done, is you could have given up one spot. I think how they should do the repechage is, every zone gets one spot. That's it. You get one spot from each zone, plus the plus the host, and everybody else has to fight out for the rest of them. Yeah, we said that, haven't we? That's 
we've said that before. We've always said that. That's the right way to do it. But you know, they don't seem to. But that, that's the way that makes sense. Yeah, because you don't. You know, you got an African team who won their qualification, and then they go into a repechage. How is that fair? It's not, is it? Because the Paralympics, and we've three of us have all played in the Paralympics. It's about playing nations that you've never played, playing all nations from around the world. Look at the situation that we could be in. We could end up with four European qualifiers this weekend coming from the men's. I think what they're looking at, or from what I could understand, I read something a while back, they're looking at making, and I think um, I heard Tanny Gray Thompson speak about the changes in sort of qualification for the sports and what they're looking at is they want to make it the best of the best teams are there. But that is unfair on host nations, definitely. And unfair on the best of the African teams. I don't see if that's if that's the case and they keep it the way it is with this repechage, I don't see an African team featuring ever in the Paralympics for ever. decades. Decades. Yeah. And if you look at the um what it what it is, it's the Paralympics was always based on continents. Yep. And uh well you you've got no representative from Africa. But we yeah. how many we've played we've got a whole heap of Paralympic experience here. We played against the South Africans, mm. the Moroccans, and it was an enjoyable game because they're gonna get their game better. Their game's gonna get better by playing better yeah. quality. So you're denying the African teams a place at the Paralympics because we want to get the best of the best. It's not all about... The Paralympics is more than just the best of the best. It's more than that. What about yeah. what happened to the Olympics with when they had the African guy who's swimming, who was in yeah. swimming? Eric the Eel. Eric the Eel. Eel. It, yeah. went, it, went, it went madness. The whole Olympics swimming went through... Like, all of a sudden, now you see an African uh, swimmers. But yeah. you imagine if you locked him off, no, you're not good enough because you ain't qualified. Yep. We don't get that. Same with, if you look at winter, winter, your winter Olympics, nobody was interested in winter Olympics in England until we had Eddie the Eagle Edwards. Absolutely yeah. hopeless, never going to win anything, but he brought a bigger audience. can't believe yep. you said Eddie the Eagle and he's on screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does look. Like he's you got. You drop that, Johnny. <laughs> he, he has got a resemblance to Eddie the Eagle. He does. But he does. Th th so much to do with the chin. But that's my point: is you wouldn't have them. Would the Winter Olympics say right? Because you, you don't have snow, you can't be there. We, we, we've got to embrace we've all seen the all... film. We've all seen the film Cool Runnings. Exactly. You know, classic. another another classic story where. You know, they didn't qualify, but they got there. So are we becoming an elitist Paralympic? Is that what they want the Paralympics to become? Elitist? Well, they didn't want them there, did they? They made, it, it, they made it more difficult for them when they got there because they changed the qualifying standard, didn't they? Yeah, with the, with the cool runnings, but they've done it. But what I'm saying is, is the IPC want to make the Paralympics elitist? Elite. Well, I know the pricing for footage is elite. Well, yeah, three thousand five hundred pounds a game. We know. By the way, it still stands. Anyone from the IPC wants a copy of our nineteen eighty four footage? The price is forty five thousand a copy. <laughs> forty five. You know, so it's up to you, IWF. We're backing you. I'm sure everybody else is backing you. We need the David Engs back in the game. All those that have been declassified, we need them back in the game. It's not just the David everybody. Engs, it's the ones of the future. Yep. It's the kids, that are the certain future. kids that are playing the sport and dedicating their life to the sport, and they're not going to get to the big dance just because there's a 30-year-old system in place. Oh, yeah, and, 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 and I think what you WF need to do is redo the system, <clears throat> and then you say to the IPC, this is our system, it's robust, we've checked it, it's all robust, let us do what we need to do. And the IPC, get off your, your high, high horse. Yeah. We know you've never liked basketball for a long, for a while. But basketball is the number one sport. Well, there's one for you. 
if Phil Craven was still IPC, do you think this quiff between the IPC and the IWBF over classification would exist? No. Definitely not. No, because he would have talked to them, discussed them, say, listen, you need to re rejig your stuff. I'm sure I don't need to speak for Phil Craven. He, he'll speak for himself, you know. I'm sure he thinks that it needs redoing, and that's all it needs to be done. But once they've redone it, then let us have back our game back. Let's have our tournaments back. You know, we should be expanding the basketball for the women. The women have had eight teams for how long? The world's got bigger. There's better teams. So they should be having 12 teams too. Yeah. The women should have 12. Totally agree. You know, because if you look in the women's game, there's teams from Africa now. There's teams from India. Are they ever going to get to the Paralympics? So what is their, no. what, what is their carrot? What's their carrot to, to say, do you know what, let's develop sports in these nations because they ain't got a chance to get to the Paralympics. You know, Thailand have done a great job, good job to yeah. Troy, but they've had Troy there helping them out. Can they get to the Paralympics? We're going to see in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, I mean, Asia's exploded, haven't they, really? I mean, China, Japan, Thailand, there's Korea, they've got teams, yeah, haven't they? yeah. But they've got to have a carrot, Blakey, at the end of the day. You've got to have a carrot that yeah. I can go to the Paralympics through our own qualifying situation. And it, and if you look at the... When you look at the FIBA qualification, they have a certain mm. amount of teams that are already qualified. I know France, the host team, men and women have qualified. But they have a repertoire too to give them other chances to qualify. Yeah. But yeah. We've, we've gone the other way. We're not giving the host nations anymore. Everybody has to qualify. That's nonsense. And we cut the amount of teams. Yeah, that's nonsense. And then we cut them out of teams. Total nonsense. You're, gonna, you're just going to keep the cream at the top. Sorry for the rest of them. Yeah, but... You, yes, you know. it doesn't develop... I mean, doesn't develop this sport. Okay, so let's look at it. You think about it. We could have a Paralympics, right, with six European teams. Yeah. America, Australia, six European teams. Is that a Paralympics or... What? It doesn't seem like a Paralympics to me. No. No, doesn't. Six. You get... And we still don't know yet if... We don't, we don't know the format of the Paralympics yet, even though we're four or five months out. Yeah, does it go to straight quarters? Yeah, or is it going straight to semis? Because when the women's game had eight teams, they went straight to they semis. They went straight to the semis, yeah. And this is what I'm so saying. So that's going to put four out. But... How can you have a Paralympics? You say it's a Paralympics, a worldwide games. You've got six European teams. The possibility of six European teams oh. plus an American and an Australian. Mm. Madness. Sad. Absolute Sad. madness. Absolute madness. Get it looked at, IWBF. <laughs> Get it looked at. Get it sorted. Yeah. Right, before we go all break, we've got to finish on Joker of the Day. Oh, yeah, we have a Joker of the Day, Blakey. I oh, know you must have... Uh, we come up with a joke of the day before. I thought, I thought, Eddie, I thought the foreskin and Eddie Diego Edwards were your starters for ten. No, but that, that, that was just a warm up. Just a lad. warm up. Before we go oh, to was it? the joke, the joke of the day. Hold is on, this. but we can't have the joke of the day before I mention our wonderful sponsors, Da Vinci Mobility, that you're going to see in the advert, and I'm sure I've never had a Da Vinci chair. Have you, Blakey? Yeah. Oh, so. Yeah. Both of you have had. Yeah. I've never had one. I was sponsored by them at the beginning well, of my career. It, it weren't a Da Vinci when I had it. It was uh, Vinny Ross. That's ah. how long ago that was. <laughs> you never know. You never know. It could be... Old school. One day we could be riding in them, those beautiful gleaming I'm looking, Da Vinci's. I'm looking for a new everyday chair. Uncle Mintz, if you're uh, watching, which I know you are. No, no, no. You, you can't get one if I can't get one. Lots of people have seen me out and about. I did do four miles with that little monkey. Yeah, it's a lot of pop, a lot of pubs in that four miles, isn't there? <laughs> like in the day, yeah, yeah. Johnny, joke of the day. I thought you just said it. No. <laughs> Rock and roll, lad. Joke of the day. Okay, here we go. Why have they never done a pregnant Barbie? I don't know. Because Ken came in another box. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> I'm here all week. <laughs> On that fence, if I'm gonna write in. Oh my god, because Ken came in another box. Lovely, Johnny. That was brilliant. Huge we... part two coming up. It's huge part two. We're gonna go on that note. We're gonna go <laughs> to the advert break where you can take a look at all the great things Da Vinci Mobility have that could change your life. Welcome to part two of the Delinquent Show. I hope you enjoyed all those beautiful toys that Da Vinci Mobility have got. Get yourself one of those new chairs. I'm hoping for one. So is Peaky Blinders Blakey. And I'm sure the little fat lad there, JP, he'll like one as well. Have to have think extra he, size though. I think he could make a little trolley as well for the back for Colin. Oh, that'd cool. yeah, that'll be cool. Johnny. I thought your shoulders were knackered. They are. Well, didn't you, you see? You do well pulling that tank round. Hold on, lad. Didn't you see on the advert? They do bikes as well. They do bike. Da Vinci Mobility do bikes. They do everything. Hand controls, whatever you want. They got it for you. Anyway, JP, what we got, man? Part two. Let's roll. Oh, emails and concerns. Oh, my goodness. We've the... been hit this week. Well, this week and last week after we announced the breaking news. The emails are just lit up, and it's all to do with the juniors. So, as you see, they've still not announced that the men's under-22s is Lucas Warburton. Alleged we believe. Allegedly. But we believe, yeah, that's the case. We heard it. So the emails have been coming in. <laughs> um, to, cut, to cut it down, it doesn't seem like anyone's happy about the appointment. Doesn't seem you're talking about a boy getting young men ready before they try and break into a senior team. Is is it a right is, is it a right appointment? Someone wrote, "Is this a joke or is it the correct appointment?" Well, it's neither a joke, and we don't think it's a correct ap appointment. It's fact. Well, it's not fact until we till they announce it, but. Yeah, I think it's. I think the the juniors have been hit hardest. Got a message the other day of someone who wants to stay anonymous, saying, "How long are the juniors?" I'm gonna let me get it up. How long is it going to be that the juniors are going to get punished, punished, punished before someone steps in and puts this association and this board in the correct place? The junior league used to be under 15s and under 19s. Minimum age was 10. They stopped the under 15s and made the minimum age 12. That meant all the clubs with younger players got an absolute spanking every time. It ruined the junior league. Well, I'll guarantee whoever changed that rule is still in office. How are you going to let them keep doing it? We've identified they ruined them before the Europeans and the Worlds last time round. They've ruined the Junior League, and now they're putting a young lad, able-bodied, no international experience, in charge of developing the future GB stars. Is it the right appointment? What do you think? What do you think, Say? Well, no, I don't, I don't think it is. I think he should have gone out to tender, but we know what happens when it goes out to tender. They already know who they want, and they give it to him. <clears throat> I don't think he's got enough spit experience. You know, he's only just uh, been put in coach at Worcester, and look at Worcester, they're no better than when he when he took over. So we're talking about the creme de la creme of our under-22s. That's what we're talking about, and it should be with somebody who's got that experience. That's what, that's what I believe. 
yeah, mm. bring him in as an assistant to someone with experience so that he can develop as a coach. Yeah. When it's, I, when, it's, it's, it's not fair on him. When it's, I went to the juniors, the coach was Nigel Smith and his assistant was Hadge. Yeah. You know, Hadge is with the Dutch team now. That's an interesting thing, isn't it? Mm. Snakes do come out the grass at some point. Yeah, they do. They 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 show their face, and you, well, all I've got to say, you guys in the in, in Holland, you Dutch, yeah, be careful, be careful, lad, because sooner before you know it, he'd he? he'd have the head coach fired, and he'll be taking the place. Mark our words on that. We know what you like. Mm. But what's, what's your mind. thoughts, Blakey, on that? On what? The Dutch thing? Well, both of them, really. The junior well, coach. I, I, I sort of said about um, the junior thing. I, I, I just... It's not good for the team, but it's not good for him. Well, it is good for him because he's got a head coach thing on his resume, but that's a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. But, all right, it's the under-22s, but... They're still going to Europeans and Worlds and they've got some pedigree there. So he's got to deliver. And Yeah, well, but right. and if he doesn't, what? Well, exactly. The buck stops with him. No, but what and I mean is, if he doesn't deliver, they've wasted the Europeans and the Worlds. Yeah. They've wasted an opportunity, which is a two-year cycle on a Europeans and the Worlds, to develop mm. them juniors for senior stage, even yeah. though... There is no pathway to the senior team. Well, they you know, have. We've got so many. We've got so many juniors right now that have contacted us that are just past the junior age, and they're in no man's land. But if you yeah, think about, if, out. if you think about it, John, it's critical now because the next Europeans will be the next that will be the qualifiers for the worlds, and the worlds will have another Europeans after that to qualify for LA. So it's critical. It's yep. a critical point junction they're at that we, that they get the right person, get those kids back on track. So come LA, we've got a decent team because I, I can't see fifty percent of the team that's going to Paris can be in in LA. Just no, I need to. To be honest, I know we spoke about it that we're trying to pick our twelve what we think will be going to Paris. And we'll get to it later, the GB camp tournament that's just been on. But my 12's changing every day. Yeah, of course. What else we got in the old mailbag? I know the juniors. We're looking after you, juniors. We're, going, we're trying our best to get you back yeah. on track. Um, it was mainly about the juniors this week. Um, two people have wrote in saying, keep shouting out for Big D, Dylan Cummins. They want him on the show. Also, the praying he's covering the repechage. I don't know. I've, I've not heard from him in a couple of days, but I hope he is doing the repechage. Um, but talking about the repechage, John, before you go any further with the repechage, we, the Lelinquent Show, I will be testing this week the watch along to see if we can get it working brilliantly where you could watch the game with us and have while we're commentating and have a chat with us as well. So hopefully we'll get it cracked this week and then we'll we're gonna, send out... We're going to test it. We're going to test it on Friday. Yeah, and then we're going to send it out. And then we'll send it out for the finals of the men's repertoire, which is Monday. Yeah, so all so finals. If you watch, watch along with us, you're more than welcome. Because we're going to be... We're going to be in the delinquent studio watching all of the finals games, which... They are quarterfinals, but they're the finals games. Obviously, we think we have to do it a little bit delayed, which is not a problem. And you'll get our views. We're going to record it too. So, just just a thought. The watch-alongs are coming to a screen near you. Sorry, Johnny. Carry on, lad. So, that was it, mainly, this week with the emails. Like I said, we were just flood with all the junior stuff and the disappointment people are saying. Uh, even... At, a junior dad wrote in. He was disgusted. But you juniors, uh, you juniors, stay strong, man. Stay strong just in there. Just something. A tournament. I saw on Facebook Lee shared something. Oh, that's about... the. That's called the Elite Eight. It's like a junior Elite Eight. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 
So is that not a league or I don't know. like the playoff thing? It's like a oh, playoff right. thing that they came up with after they d- disbanded the f- under 15s and the championships. They've come up with this bogus rubbish, but it should yeah. be a good tournament, Elite Eight. Hopefully, it's it's done, well, it's live. <laughs> One of the messages we got in was someone that's no longer involved in the sport but still follows it, no longer involved in it because of the way the juniors were shat on, let's say. So what the treatment the juniors have had is actually pushing people away from our sport and then people that have caused that issue are still in office. And vote with no confidence, can't keep saying it. Yeah, but the thing is, John, do you think we'd be allowed to be to go to the Elite Eight? It's in Nottingham, it's not that far. Not that far from you. It's quite far from me. <laughs> yeah, but you'd be barred. I'm not barred. You're barred. So what? then, after that, we had... you got to be a member to go? No, ridiculous. <laughs> no. We'll buy a ticket. We'll buy a ticket. I think it's free. Go in the back. Oh, they pushed you out of. Yeah, I think it's a free entry. I might just take myself along there to have a look at this Elite 8. It looks quite interesting. Anyway, let's nice. move on. So... We're not filming last week. We didn't speak about what we saw in the uh, Easter tournament. It was a very unusual tournament, to, to say the, the least. The, <laughs> to Aussies, say the least. The Aussies won it, but they, they looked like they were playing their full-strength team all the time. The Dutch, were yeah. for me, were disappointing, but they kept rotating their team. The French were yeah, disappointing. Yeah. Big double Ampin play, did he? Was that against the French? No, I just think the, that... the, the one team that came out of it, which is the one I picked, if you look at the prediction, was Italy. Italy, yeah. Carlo Di Giusto, he knows when it's time to lock down the hatchet. Battle time. Yeah, the rest of them, like obviously Australia and Italy. It, it, Italy was probably one of the teams of the tournament. France and um, the Dutch it was just a strange, strange. They were messing around with different units, different units. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a good tournament. It's good to watch some games. Aussies won. The Germans was a, sh- a shocking one for me. They just... Yeah, the Germans was for me as well. Different coach, same way of playing. Yeah, Exa- I got exactly the same feeling. It, it wouldn't have mattered if Fritz was there or Nikolai or now this guy. They're playing exactly the same. When are they going to get a coach just to... Change the system. And I think change like, the system and build the team around Thomas Bomb. Yeah, and that, I feel sorry Thomas for him. Bomb, that guy. He's a has great got guy. A basketball IQ. Yeah. Unbelievable. But he's just not getting the system. Yeah, he's a great no guy. No system to support his game. Yeah, exactly. And his game is he, he's a great shooter. He's a great player. Like he's he's got a great understanding of the game. But the system just doesn't work for him. No. It just doesn't work for him. I don't understand. If you're going to change, make that big change from Nikolai. You got to change, yeah. What you're doing, it's not worked for all these How years. Long been in just remember that quote. Just remember that quote. What you've just said. You need to change what you're doing. Remember that. I'll bring it back up in a bit. Uh, <laughs> he's been in charge. Uh, four months, something like that. Three months. Wow, that's a big change just before Paralympics, isn't it? Well, it didn't work, Blakey. That's why they're not gone straight through. They're yeah, play, I suppose. they're playing exactly the same way as when when they were at the Euros. It's not working. So they've bombed that guy out. No, Nick decided he'd been there a long time, and nothing's changed. They never got nowhere near where they should have at, mm. at world level, Paralympic level. So he decided to step down and give somebody else a crack. But then they, another guy's come in, and he play, it's just playing the same way. They're just going to yep. waste the talent, a generation, a bit like how we do in England. Just a, a generation of talent is just going to be lost and they're not going to achieve what they should do. They could easily, this weekend, go out in the repercharge. Easily. If, yeah. he, if they don't get it right. I forgot that was this weekend. <laughs> I'm on the ball, aren't I? It looks like you're on the, the, the large mojito. I know that. No, it's... Um... What do you call it? Smirnoff Ice. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Blake. no, no, Blakey. That's my drink, Smith. lad. That's my it's drink. Saints' favourite. Bloody go out with him. I'll have a pint of Guinness and he'll, oh, I'll have a Smirnoff Ice. And they Lovely. look around. Where's your, where's your girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's just round the so, corner. We just had the GB men's camp stroke tournament with the Spanish, the French, 
and Canada. Canada, yeah. Hmm. Bit weird that they weren't streaming it. They weren't apparently the claim was they weren't streaming it because it was friendlies. But was I didn't realise the Easter tournament in Germany was a major. Yes, yeah, it's you a bit Where did you find that? Uh, I have my sources. I had my sources. I found quite a few now. I've watched a few of the games, nearly all of them. But it was a very especially the first game. It was the GB first game. And Let's just talk about it. You yeah. said just before things have got to change. Or well, what was it you said? Well, things have got to change. So if you let's take us back to the World Championships this year. Yep. Totally agree. The final. Right? The final. Yeah. Four seconds to go. GB ball. Clueless. They lose the World Championship gold medal. So you think in that time, so what's that, five, six, seven, eight, nine months ago, nearly a year, you think they would have figured that out. So. But but wait a minute. How are they going to figure it out? You figure these things out at camp. Yeah. But let me get, finish off before you talk, John. Go on then. Okay. So come, probably a year later, they're... In the same situation against France, 3.9 seconds or 3.4 seconds to go. Sideline. Sideline ball. Exactly as in as in the World Championships. And what do they do? Inbound, turn it over. They turn it over by making, and we've been talking about this for so long now, that cross court class. Yeah. They... they Decided not to go through the middle. They decide, let's go a cross-court pass. The cross-court pass gets picked off by the magician. Who ends up wanging a full quarter. Yeah. If that had gone in, <laughs> yeah. he wouldn't have been called the magician it goes, anymore. It goes to the, the overtime. I'd have called him Copperfield. And then France, bear in mind, they've just been at the Easter tournament, didn't play very well, end up winning in overtime. What's yeah. going on, John? Tell me... Shouldn't that know. have been rectified? Yeah, it should have. If it, it, Even if this camp in Spain, this tournament camp GB are having, even if it's, you know, one of your limited sessions before a Paralympic, because they are limited, the men. There's no two ways about it. You, you're going to use it to practice things that you're going to need down the line, right? So, in one of the games... Against Canada, they started with 13 points. And the lineup they played would never feature at a Paralympics. So, why would you use that lineup for an entire quarter? That's 12 minutes you'll never get back of your prep. I don't see what they've, pre they've prepped. Why did they not prep and try? Or have they never tried? You've got four seconds left, sideline, you're down by one. We practiced it at camps. So let me get you Murray put that Murray put them situations in many times we had to practice it. So did Tip so he put he put those three minutes left in the game. That team's up by eight. What's your team gonna do? You had to coach yourselves. But the He'd other sit back and watch. But the other thing that really had me thinking was I watched every G B game and Phil Pratt, Greg Warburton, they played in most of the games. Now, what are they going to do if either of those two are in foul trouble? There's no yeah, plan B. So no, let's, let's take you back to 2007. 2007, the prep for our Paralympics going into 2008. Yeah, let's take you back. Right? What did we do? Johnny, you know. Blake, you know. What did we do? In 2007, when we went to all the tournaments, there for preparation, just in case something crazy <laughs> happened. But we've done it in two different ways. The first thing that we did, right, I'm just going to, I'll say the first one, is Murray didn't coach. He let myself and Hatch coach games, just in case mm -hmm. something w would happen. And what happened? It yeah. happened. But yeah. what about the playing side? I'll leave that to you two. Well, I'll tell you one. Straight off the bat. I had to sit and watch. Yeah, and Simon. 
Yeah. And what happened at what happened in the 2008 Paralympics? What happened? Well, we lost, we lost our two premier top scorers. Players. Yeah, two top scorers went down with the shots. And that little fellow as well, he had the shots. <laughs> Burnsy. Yeah. Yeah. And so, then we had to play America. Yeah. Which is the game that everybody, you know, Memphis is the nine game. Now, let's put this in this context now. If we didn't do what we did in preparation before, do you think that Magnificent Nine would have happened? No. 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 I remember in Germany being sat on the sideline at the end of the bench with Simon, not even strapped in my chair, but I was sat in it. Murray said, you're not featuring today, but stay in your chair. And John Hall had a brain fart in the game with Sega or something. Next thing, Murray said, I need to get them off to give them the air dry treatment. Just strap in a minute. And this is when I strapped in and shouted at Tristan and Simon, smash him, which Gail didn't like, if you remember, and Gail chased me in the dining room. Yeah. I was on for seven seconds. That was it in that game. Just so Murray could give someone an absolute air dryer. But it wasn't just that game, Johnny, was it? No, I didn't. I hardly played that tournament. It was hardly was, played. But it wasn't even just that tournament either, was it? There were several we were in America that exactly the same thing happened. Yeah. Look in America. If you <laughs> in America, what happened when uh, we'd finished playing? Murray, you get the sheet. Uh, you played that many minutes. You played that right. Anyone who's not played so many meet to uh, thingy down on the track in a minute. Or meet thingy in the swimming pool. You're going to be doing laps in the pool or you're doing laps in the track. So we'd all work the same rate. Mm. And what... what, what and Don't get me wrong. Do, do not get me wrong. I'd rather spend 25 minutes playing a game than 25 minutes on the track. But the question to that is you hated every minute of not playing, yeah? Yeah, One, hated it. One, you hated it. Two, I'm sh I believe it made you hungrier. But three... It, made, it was for the better of the it team. It was for the better for all the team. Now, yeah. the situation is now, we're going into Paris. What do you think would happen if either of those two get in foul trouble and can't play? I don't even think it comes down to that. I think if someone sat there and watched the games that I've seen in the last five or ten days, someone's going to say, make Greg Warburton dribble left because he can't. Make... Phil Pratt, go down the right because he's not as comfortable bank shooting on the right than he is in the left. People do that and take away high percentage parts of your game. You're going to have to find option B. But I don't see an option B. Well, I, don't see, I don't see they've developed an option B since the last Worlds. But that's when you need a donkey to get shooters open. Yeah, but at the moment... Or oh, have they got one? No, but even that, they. We, we, it's like it's really weird that all the coaches around the world in these international teams have let them, our team, do whatever they want. The only time you've seen was the last at the Worlds with the Americans, but the other teams allow <clears throat> Greg to shoot, and he's a great shooter. I love him to bits. He's a great shooter, and what he does is fantastic. Phil Pratt, probably one of the world's best. But yep. they're being allowed to do whatever they like playing. Now, we're trying to make sure that if that's taken away, who's going to step up to the dance? Or yeah. is there a plan B? I don't know if there's a plan. This is what I was saying the other day. Simon Brown played most of the first game against one of the, one of the early games. He's averaging six minutes for his club. You put in all your eggs in one basket that Simon Brown's going to be a big part of GB's success in Paris by playing him so many minutes for GB yet he doesn't play so many minutes for his club strange mm. that's, but on, that's a roll of the dice I wouldn't like to do and talking about that roll of the dice we've got the US team they've just selected their team and look who's back look who is back the king oh. our, our nemesis is back in the darts Paul Shooty, congratulations, making Team USA. Wow. Wow. We had some epic games. A good leader as well, having that. He's, He's a great leader. Great leader. Got a youngest team. Paul, we miss you. 
We miss you. We don't miss playing with you because you cost us a gold medal. But because we're mates, yeah. we'll allow you. We'll allow you that. But congratulations, making uh, Team USA. Gold medal and a bronze medal, saying. Yeah, yeah. But mm. it's, it's the gold. The bronze, the bronze hurt more than the gold, if you ask oh, me. Yeah. No, the gold for me hurt. Being world champions, that hurt more. But Paul, I forgive you. I forgive you. But well, well done making the US team. So... It's going to be an interesting Paralympics, man. It's going to be an interesting. Uh, but before then, cool. we got We've this got weekend's repercharge. There's going to be... Oh, I can't wait for it. Me neither. I'm going to be locked and loaded. I can't I'm wait for it. Now. I'm going to be locked and loaded. We're going to watch it every game. It's on our time zone. It's in Paris. The, the games are going to be live through IWBF YouTube channel. Right, so we got That's a link what I'm for saying that. Now. I'm hoping Dylan's going to be commenting on it. Hey, but, um, do you know what? If he ain't commentating, Dylan, you've got come to our watch along. Yeah, come on, our watch along, definitely. Definitely come to our watch along. Me, Johnny, Blakey, DC, and whoever else wants to join the party because it's going to be a party. Yeah, well, hopefully he'll be commentating. There. He should be. He's the best out there at the moment. He's the best out there. Anyway, let's move on, Johnny, because that's that. Anything else we got in the old mailbag? Um, just regarding footage. So, as you're seeing, we put some 1988, 1998 stuff up. I know it's hard to watch some of the GB ones because you never won. But you can see that the formula was there, you know, even against America. If you didn't miss the layups... Or the easy shots, they'd have walked over America. But 19, mm. they had the 1984 footage, which I liked. And I think I spotted myself in the crowd. No way. Yeah, I think I spotted myself. I'm going to yeah, try. Yeah, that's it. At the beginning, the, the fellow with the camera, he was loving the crowd, weren't he? Yeah, I think I spotted myself. I was there. I remember I was there in 84. I've got to say, the 1984 footage, it's Phil Craven's shirt looks like it was made by Mad Max. <laughs> what well, about Nigel's chair? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's just, I think that was. Like just, I think that was a Chevron, you know. From, looks like he just got that from Sainsbury's. Yeah, yeah, but oh, what a game against France, Ray! Mm. Thanks for the footage, but Ray, how did you get away with fouling Michel Gradel at the end of that game, and the referee didn't oh, call no. it? Do you know what I loved about the game? Because they had no strappings. When they got fouled, they went scrambling <laughs> along the floor. Yeah. Fucking brilliant! <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Oh, the, the the best one was Dave Kelly when he got fouled and. Jumped out of his chair and slammed the ball down. <laughs> hey, I like Dave Kelly. Yeah. Dave Kelly seemed to know where the camera was each time. Did you notice? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> He's looking up at the... <laughs> and he had a great perm, didn't he? He had a perfect perm. Oh. That was definitely oh, an 80s. A de definitely. From, behind, from behind, I thought it was Willy Wonka. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was one of the Pan's people, actually. You know, from top of the pops. If you well, I, think, in a chair. I think it was the French... I think it was the French game of 1984. Just before they line up, the French start lining up, and GB is still doing the layup warm up, and all of a sudden you hear this voice, "Line up, lads!" <laughs> yeah, but he was in the I, building. I, I, oh, I Phil was in the building. Also in the French game, Phil had a red. Phil had the opposite shirt to what all his teammates was, and then when the game started, he had. He was all kit suited and booted, but you gotta love those vests, haven't you? The '84 vests. They, them retro. Ones they were like cute. retro one. They were definitely like a uh, Alf Garnet vests that they have. Who made that? <laughs> they were like Alf Garnet vests. Brilliant. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. brilliant. If you've not watched them yet, you've got to go and watch. You gotta because to see the game, and it does remind you of Stoke Mandeville. You know oh, that, that the green floor. The green that floor. You didn't like falling on that, did you? That no. was rock hard. The scoreboard where they put the, put the names on the scoreboard, that's old school, yes. that is. 1984, yeah, if you've not watched it, take a look. And while you're there watching it, no, subscribe. Would. It was brill. It was brill. It was brill. It was brill. But also, on the footage, I took down the, 2000, uh, the 1994 final. It was a bad copy. I managed to adjust it. I've put it back up. That's getting some major viewings. But, um, Johnny. I'm glad that people are enjoying the 84. K Kaney was awesome in the 80, in the 1994 final. Yeah. Johnny, you found a discovery that we're going to put up. A discovery from way back. I wasn't going to say anything. No, no. we got to tell these people because they need to watch it. 
we've got a discovery we found from one of our Hall of Famers, Paul Pollock, who nobody knows how. Yeah, we see if Blakey remembers. Blakey, this. you got to listen to this and see if you remember. Go on, Johnny. Tell I've him. Got three cassettes that are currently getting knitted together this Thursday of the entire Brisbane holding camp and Sydney experience. Oh, so right. he's my dad has somehow filmed us at the holding camp in Brisbane, jet skiing, coming in. Arriving in Sydney, the cock up with the French bags at the check in at the uh, Olympic Village, us going into stadiums, the locker room. It's, it's just like a, a behind the scenes documentary. Even when we're on the way to the Olympic Village in Sydney, and Sheila, the bus driver, slammed on, and everyone. Oh, Stevie came went absolutely ballistic. And Dan. Dan, Dan, Dan did. Yeah, Dan did. Yeah, but, yeah, but Blakey, do you yeah, remember but, him did you ever see him with a camera? No, there's three whole cassettes of it all. The opening ceremony, the closing ceremony. I don't remember the closing well, ceremony. I, I, I was out there. Me and Dan Johnson used to muck about doing Rick Fox and that, but I don't know where the tapes of that are. But, you know, I don't remember your dad having a camera. But, yeah, and the other part of the footage, which I'm really excited about, is we're going to be putting up <laughs> GBV Canada, the 2000 Sydney semi-final. IPC don't have that, so that saved us three and a half grand. If they want a copy, it's 45 grand. And also, another one the IPC don't have, which we do have, is GBV France, the quarterfinal. Oh, great. Another great game. Another great game. Two great games. There. IPC don't have that. That is currently standing at £45,000. But I'll tell you what, copy with our Hall of Famer Paul Pollock's footage, we're going to put that into shorts. So you can have a shorts with a bit of music because it could be Benny Hill style. We have no idea what's on there. I'll tell you, it's a shame no one videoed when um, Terry soaked Jed. Do you remember? And Jed chased him around the village. He couldn't catch him. He couldn't get nowhere near him. Yeah, no, he, he killed couldn't. himself. Our uh, 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 sprinter, Terry. But yeah, so that's to come. That is to come. Watch out for that in the next few weeks. Yeah. And also, I found a game. Fundoza in Madrid. Every year you used to do a like a promotional game. They used to have Ugh. Dallas Mavericks over once a year when it was uh, Raul Ortega and Paul Schultz who were all playing at Dallas Mavericks. Cool. And, and the year I was there, it was Fundoza against the Dutch national team. And I found the game. Oh, some real Now, the Dutch coach, it, this is 2000. The Dutch coach is Hank McKenzie for this match. Van der Linden's playing, they're all playing. But for Fundosa, you're going to see a prime shooting display of Antonio Inares. Oh, legend. He is a legend. Wait till you see He it. is a goddamn <laughs> That's legend. to come. That'll probably be up next week. Good, good. We're together. looking forward to it. Remember, if you want to watch the game, subscribe. We're getting there. We're getting near that T-shirt. We're still a bit of a way but come on subscribe you have i know you guys have been subscribing because they've been going up and going up we're nearly going to be hitting the mark so if you keep want to watch these games you got to keep well, we subscribing know 10 11, and 12 have been watched a lot they must have the most <laughs> viewers <laughs> <laughs> they must have the most yeah. viewers be interesting to see how many views so bad oh they were peaked up they went through the roof then <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they had solicitors look at them and then the solicitors have come back and said, Take his membership off him. <laughs> <That's the latest laughs> yeah. Is he a member? Right. Block him. He's done. But what? Is that it? Can we not shut them down? No. Romeo no. done. Anyway, John, we're not talking about them. This is the fun section. What else have we got in our fun section? Oh, well, do we go on to the next bit? Or do I tell you about my incident last night? You're coming. Uh, go on to the next bit and then tell us about your incident last night. Right. The next bit is it's a special announcement. And the announcement this week goes to John Pollock. Oh. Congratulations on picking UConn to win the NCAA Championship the first time they've ever won it back to back. What a load of bollocks! You just picked. The, you, just, you just picked 
the team that won it before. What did you do with the women's game? Did you pick anybody in the women's game? Do yeah, you know who actually won? I picked, I picked the one who won it. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. If I didn't remind you, you wouldn't even have watched it. Thing is, Saint, he only picked... I was you. watching Antiques Roadshow. I forgot it was on. He only picked Yukon because I WhatsApped him and told him to pick him. Oh, I have no UConn. doubt. I have no doubt. Because the last time I picked Yukon was when Ben Gordon and Oakenfort were the... And they won it. Anyway, congratulations to UConn last night winning the NCAA. Oh, that muskies. <laughs> men's. And congratulations to South Carolina for winning the NCAA women's, which was a better game. It was fantastic on Sunday. You're only saying that because North Carolina weren't in it. No, I'm not. It was nice for you to see a good game on Sunday, weren't it? We haven't got to that yet, so why? Do you want to be barred? Yeah. Your, your membership will be revoked. Just remember... Worry, your, your bit's coming, Blake. Don't, don't worry, lad. We've got something for you, bro. We've got something for you. Go on, John. You. Go well, ahead. Anyway, last, last night, Jesus. This is off record. What, what Did you have Jesus come to your house last night? No. I was in the kitchen washing up after I'd had my tea. I always have Alexa on. Playing a bit of music like... I was listening to a bit of Vera Lynn last night. Very <coughs> emotional. Anyway, next thing, the missus come barging in. She says to me, did you not hear that? Are you deaf? And I said, what? She said, I've just fell down the stairs. I said, oh, so sorry. I thought that was the start of EastEnders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Bloody hell, lad. Dude. And you ain't got black you ain't got a black eye. Not yet. I've stayed well away. Well not anyway. until, not until she watches this. Black eyes coming. As you, hear, coming. as you can hear in the background, that sad music's coming on. It means we're only talking about one thing. Older miles. Athletic. Older athletic. Tony. Drew. Drew one one in what was a crucial must win against the local rivals against Rochdale I think they call it something like the cotton hat or the flat cap match or whatever Tony messaged me but uh, yeah that's what the sad music's all about them poor athletic the ticks are not going to make the playoffs oh should we have 30 okay. seconds 30 second silence for the ticks nah Forget no. that. <laughs> Forget that. Yeah, we did a 30 second silence. Remember what happened? Yeah. Action Ooh. Jackson, 1927. <laughs> <laughs> Unlucky the ticks. So you're going to be in the same division for another season. You blew the playoffs. You was in good form, but you blew it. Tony, all you can do now is just rely on the delinquent show every week now until the new season comes. Talking now, about. As I, I, as I'm multitasking, I've got the digital script here off, Joe. We're doing a live show. I've even got the box on. You want to see this. Breaking news about Man City and the point deduction for their uh, financial irregularities. It says, if Man City were to be stripped of their titles, Man United and Liverpool will get three titles each. Arsenal will get one. Stoke and Watford will be FA Cup winners. Arsenal, Villa, Chelsea, Sunderland and Liverpool are League Cup winners. But Spurs still don't get a single thing. I've <laughs> 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 had it for my whole life. I don't expect anything. I'll tell you what though, Blakey, they are playing well at the moment, Spurs. I think they're going to seal that fourth spot. We look good when we go a goal down. I hope they play well against uh, Thingy, City, Arsenal. So yeah, we we got to play you away, haven't we? Yeah, the three, other two we've played that one. Three points, well, three three points for Liverpool. Yeah, no, play your bench on that one. You might as well play point. your bench, lads. No point you coming. All right, not we'll not the way you're playing, lad. How high line you're playing? We'll, we'll it'll be disaster. Anyway, oh, mate, we'll do what we did at our place. We'll bring our thirteenth man on. Right, you know who he is? The foreigner, VAR. Oh, yeah, yeah, VAR. On a note, the Manx 
got away with murder this weekend <laughs> against Liverpool. And did you know, and I saw this today, I could not believe it, John, could not believe it, lady. Liverpool, against Manchester United this season, they've had three games against them. Not won any of them. How many shots on target do you think Liverpool had in those three games? Not many. 79. They had 89 shots on target. 89 shots. On target? Well, eight, that didn't say on target or not, eight, but they had uh, 89 shots. shots in three games. I, I How many did United have? Four. Something like that. Something like that. Unbelievable. I saw, on I saw a Sunday. stat about that Nunes on Sky Sports News yesterday. He's top yeah. of the attempts. stats of, of, of attempts, yeah. yeah. But he's nowhere near at the top mm. of goals scored. The problem is with Just Nunes... A little bit more drizzling. He, he, the problem with Nunes is he scores the difficult ones and misses the easy ones. By yeah. half-time... On should Sunday, have been 3-1 at least. It should have been 3-1 been... at half-time. It should have been at least three or four. And you just knew it was coming. I sat there, me and John was sat there, and we thought, we knew this was coming. We yeah. absolute. They had two shots on target, scored twice. We had 20-odd shots. They tried to give it to you as well right at the death, didn't they? Jeez. Just let me say before we carry on, to the person that messaged the IWB delinquents to have a dig at me, because they're a Man United fan, and I'm a Liverpool. After we lost to United in the FA Cup, all I can say is shame on you. Shame on you. Don't lower yourself. Do not lower yourself. I've got your number 118. <laughs> oh, what? Did they want to remain anonymous? Yeah. No. She has to stay anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> she asked. Uh, a woman had to... Uh, have a dig at us. Anyway, lad, it's football time this week. We've got Champions League going on tonight, the Arsenal Bayern. What's your predictions, boys? I I've, think I'm watching Real Madrid City, you know, tonight. I think I might, I might have to have two on. I might have to have my phone on and the TV on. I've got a feeling Bayern Munich might do them tonight. I'm going to draw with that one. But I think the uh, City... City, Man City, what well, uh, Real Madrid, Man City tonight is going to be a yellow card fest. But I think you. I think Real Madrid might do it. I think tonight will be Real Madrid win and Bayern Munich win. That's worth a that's worth a, a skydive on. I'm telling you, I might just do that. Right, so we got to get to that part of the <laughs> the week that we always get to, which is what the footy news. For the following week, Premier League prediction week time. Prediction time. Well, we start off with a barn burner. Twelve thirty Saturday, Newcastle at home to Spurs. Yeah. I've got to go with a Spurs win, but Newcastle were. A... I'm hoping for a Spurs win. If I'm honest, they're not. Um, they're not easy for us to play against. I I'm going to go. I think Spurs. They're in good form. I think Newcastle are up and down. I think it's a Spurs win for me. Tottenham will win this uh, that game. Brentford, Sheffield United. I think Brentford going, need it. Home win. Home I think win. Brentford need it. Home win. Lakey. Yeah. 1-0 yeah. Brentford. BB. Burnley, Brighton. Oh, to be fair, the way Brighton, Brighton have been hit and miss lately. To, to be fair, Brighton have been terrible lately. Yeah, they, they, mm. they. You know, I don't know what's wrong with them. They're just not playing like they did last year. I think I'm going to go for a home win, Burnley home win. Draw. I'll go. I'll go Brighton away win. Man City Luton. Oh, all day long, Man City. Yeah. City. All day long. Forest Wolves. I I'm think draw. I think Forest might do it just because they got a bit of you know they got that momentum at the moment, and the news of uh, what I'll talk about later when they come up might help them galvanise themselves. Forest win, and then the last one. Yeah, Forest. Sorry, last one. Bournemouth United. I think Bournemouth will do it. Bournemouth will do him. I think Bournemouth will do him. Draw. Hmm. Someday, 
Liverpool Palace. Home Easy, win. Easier home win. Mm. Yeah, Liverpool. West Ham Fulham. Ooh. Fulham are another one of those teams. They can't get uh, formed together all the time. So I've got no, a, home, but... a home win. I'm going to go <laughs> over five goals in that match. Yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look what they did to us, but that was a. Was that at their place? Yeah, it was. Yeah, they can turn it on, old Fulham. Yeah, but, but... Then, then they could be just terrible. Yeah. And then, last one Sunday, Arsenal, Aston Villa. I'm going Villa. I'm hoping, I'm going... For, I'm hoping for a Villa win. That's I'm, hoping I'm hoping for Arsenal. I'm hoping for Arsenal win, obviously. I knew you was a red. We knew no, you was a red. We need Villa to drop points. All right, we'll let you off. And then Monday Night Football... Chelsea Everton. Now, Chelsea have got to be. I don't even know what to make about Chelsea. But I think this game, I think Everton can win. And because they've just got deducted two more points. Uh, is how it, is it? I don't know. Is it? Is where's, it where's Man City's points? Is there somebody up there that just want to relegate Everton? Well, Must City be. have got 150-odd charges they've got to look through. All they? right, just do the first 20 now and then leave the other I know. 85. But is, seriously, though, this is serious. Does somebody really want to relegate Everton? <laughs> Johnny does. No, what? I don't want them. That. Like Bill Shankly said, I, I'm exactly like Bill Shankly. If Everton were playing in my back garden, I'd draw the curtains. <laughs> <laughs> I'd get the gun well, out. I don't know whether to go for Chelsea in this. I mean, I wouldn't let Chelsea walk Colin because they can't hold on to a lead. <laughs> <laughs> We're here all week. We're yeah, here all week. <laughs> <laughs> He's only just bad it out of the park. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think uh, Everton will win. I think Monday. Everton win. Yeah, Everton. That's it on the old football, I'm afraid. Well, but don't forget... We're talking about football. It's Repechard weekend. Yeah, men. This Repechard. weekend, look what we're going to say to you. Look out for the message on our Facebook, on our web page, for to join us with the watch along. We will test on Friday. We're probably going to test tomorrow or Thursday as well, so we get it right. So yeah. you guys well, can four join. Four skins available. Four skin will be available. Sometime. Yeah. At least one then. Not Thursday. Yeah, all right. It doesn't start till Friday. <laughs> and let Durf, no, and let in, not it. And <laughs> DC DC, if you're not commentating over there, which we hope you are, we hope you're on your way there now. I'll drop him a message. We'd like you to come on our watch along. Let's have a good laugh, a good and you could teach us a bit of thing about, you know, commentating. Obviously, we've got our quote of the week. And the quote of the week this week, or quote of the last two weeks, is the problem is people are being hated when they are real and are being loved when they are fake. That's our is quote that of by? the week. And that is by Bob Marley. I like that. We I love, like that. We love Bob Marley. Bob, we love you. So, anything else, John, in this week's show? Or do we wrap it up? No, that's uh, totally all done. So, guys, it's been a great delinquent show. We're sorry we missed you last week, but we're giving you all those helpings. Sorry, Dave Kelly, with your coffee. You didn't have nothing to do with your coffee. But now this week you've got something to do with your coffee. And we love the perm because the perm was great. It's good to see it. It's been an emotional show. Good to have old uh, Foreskin back with us. We love him, Colin, who was misbehaving at the start. Now he's, he's been asleep. now he's been asleep and he's been dragged over there. RSPCA, don't worry, he's looking after Colin. No, I'm rubbing his belly. Yeah, more like you're rubbing his bollocks, dirty. You see that on my nose? Oh yeah, he's got a gash on his nose. I 
had him on the bed mucking about, rubbed his belly like that, and he just swiped me. You mean you, oh. you mean you rubbed his bollocks and then he went rattle? <laughs> yeah, un- that's his way of saying you're not cutting them <laughs> off. <laughs> it was unreal. That was it. Straight up, right, we're going to wear them claws down. We went for a four-mile walk. What are they killed him. Continues. Go nowhere. We ain't going nowhere. We can't get stopped now. Because it's bad. What the fuck? Great show. You, the association, to remember what we're, we're talking about. Vote of no confidence in them. Obviously, if you haven't seen the videos... Go to the YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, hit that subscribe button for us. We will see you on the next edition of The Delinquent Show. I'm out! Got drama, the saga continues. We ain't going nowhere. We ain't.